Hello again everyone, welcome to Unit 6, where we will figure out how clinical decision making takes place based on diagnostic tests. By the end of this unit, we hope you achieve the following objectives. Number 1. Comprehend the probabilistic process that leads to performing a diagnostic test. Number 2. Develop skills to calculate the intrinsic values of a diagnostic test. Number 3. Assess the scientific quality of publications about diagnostic tests. And number four, understand the process of clinical decision making based on a diagnostic test. This unit's agenda includes the common five topics. What is a diagnostic test and what is it used for? Concepts about Bayesian conditional probability. The intrinsic properties of a diagnostic test. Decision rules in a diagnostic test and evaluation of a diagnostic test. In this video, we will briefly review the first two topics. In the coming activities, we will deepen the rest. What is a diagnostic test? When you hear about a diagnostic test, you think of a laboratory or an imaging test. But strictly, a diagnostic test is everything that modifies the uncertainty surrounding a belief. In our case, the belief that a patient has a certain health condition. It is important to highlight that what is modified is the belief and not the probability that the patient has or does not have a disease. In reality, the patient either has the condition under study or does not have it. However, translated into clinical practice, we usually take it as an equivalent to the probability of having the disease. This probability is located within a range between 0, which is impossible, and 1, which is certainly, passing through intermediate values where 0.5 or randomness is located. A good example is the result that is obtained when rolling a die, where there are impossible values, such as getting a number 7, random values, that you get an even number, or values of total certainty, like getting any number between 1 and 6. The previous example makes use of a probability called frequentist, which is based on the relative frequency of an event expected long term or after a sequence of trials. This approach forms the basis of classical statistics. Frequent inference estimates the probability that a set of data could occur in case the null hypothesis is true. In this way, the confidence intervals estimate the number of times the true parameter is captured within the range if we repeat the calculation many times. However, as previously mentioned, in the real world, clinical cases do not happen in an indefinite sequence of trials, but only once, and it is necessary to calculate the probability of the veracity of the clinical trail, that is, the veracity of a subjective probability or the degree of certainty of a belief. This probability is called Bayesian. Bayesian inference is the relocation of uncertain beliefs along possibilities. This is very useful in medicine, where clinical decisions start from a high degree of uncertainty. Bayesian analysis assumes that the probability, in this case, the belief that something will happen, is conditioned by prior knowledge in continuous updating. That is, the starting point is an a priori probability that is modified when new information exists that changes our belief. Applied to the diagnosis of diseases, Bayesian statistics allow us to calculate the degree to which our belief that a patient has a certain condition, called a priori probability or pre-test probability, is modified after performing a diagnostic test, called the post-test probability. A good diagnostic test is one that can modify the pre-test probability either in a positive or negative sense towards the confirmation or discarding of a disease. Let's better understand all this with the following example. A 12-year-old boy arrives in the emergency room with abdominal pain, vomiting, and fever. During the physical examination, you detect a positive rebound sign. A probable diagnosis at this point, pre-test, is acute appendicitis. Let's say that the probability is 30%. 
it is important to insist that this is the probability about the statement has appendicitis is correct and not the probability that the patient actually has it because the patient already has it or does not have it. He cannot have 30% appendicitis. Suppose we do a blood count and sheds 12,000 leukocytes. This increases our certainty to 60%. That is, this diagnostic test doubled our previous belief. We could say it is a good test. However, it may not be enough to decide to perform a surgical procedure. At this point, the clinician has a high suspicion of a diagnosis of appendicitis, but needs a test to confirm it, a test that further increases the pretest probability. A positive ultrasound result, for example, could carry the post-test probability up to 85%, which could be enough to make a decision. If, on the contrary, we had a negative blood count and a negative ultrasound, the pretest probability could decrease down to 20%, so we would decide not to perform a surgical procedure and keep the patient under observation. In the next activities of this unit, we will analyze how these decision-making rules work based on the calculation of the pretest and post-test probability. First, we will see how to obtain the intrinsic values of the diagnostic test, which are sensitivity and specificity, and then we will explain the values of likelihood that will allow us to estimate the degree to which I believe is modified from the result of a diagnostic test. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and see you next time.